Hello everyone and welcome to Ann's Sleep, a whole you social talk show series. My name is Tommy Licatese. For this multi-part series, we discuss different lifestyles that can impact our sleep health. I have the pleasure of hosting Dr. Huma Sheikh. Today, we're talking about stroke and sleep. Welcome, Dr. Sheikh. Thank you, thank you for having me. So for this episode, we're gonna be discussing stroke and sleep. So what exactly is a stroke? Sure, so a stroke is essentially when a part of the brain is not receiving enough blood and therefore is not receiving oxygen to function. And there are various different types of stroke from my understanding? Yes, so there are two main types of stroke. One is called a hemorrhagic stroke, which is about 20% of all stroke, and the other is called an ischemic stroke, and that's about 80%. And the main difference between the two is that in a hemorrhagic stroke, a blood vessel essentially tears or pops and there's bleeding in and around the brain and an ischemic stroke there's a clot that develops inside the blood vessel so it blocks off more blood and therefore oxygen from getting to different parts of the brain. What would be the early signs that you would look for in your patients to identify this? So it's really important that patients who are having a stroke are able to get help and identify it very early on because the earlier you identify the stroke the more likelihood is that we can do something to help reverse the stroke itself um, and not leave lasting or permanent effects from it. Um, what we tell patients is the some of the earliest signs to look for is a mnemonic called FAST, and that is your face that may look droopy on one side, or the person might feel like their words are slurring. Um, the other one is sensory symptoms, so one side of your body may feel numb or tingly, um, and then weakness, so weakness in your face, in your arm or your leg, or the other one is a very severe headache. Um, especially with hemorrhagic stroke, you can develop what we call the worst headache of your life. Um, so the most important thing with all of these is time, calling 911 and getting help as soon as possible. How does sleep relate to stroke? What are the, what can occur during our sleep that can increase that likeliness of having a stroke? So we know that there are certain risk factors that increase your likelihood of a stroke. Um, high blood pressure, smoking are two big ones, but also conditions like obstructive sleep apnea um, and central sleep apnea can also increase your risk of a stroke. How does that happen? So in sleep apnea, there are periods during the night where you are essentially not breathing. And this can last for seconds, but it can occur multiple times during the night. So during that time when you're not breathing, your brain is not getting oxygen. Um, also, obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea over time can increase your risk of things like hypertension, um, cardiovascular disease, and all these things can also be a risk factor for stroke. So sleep apnea, unfortunately, is very underdiagnosed. Um, I think there's a statistic that about 80 to 90% of people who have sleep apnea don't know it. So the first most important thing is identifying these patients that have this risk factor for stroke. So how would you say that age um, and sleep apnea can be correlated with stroke? So actually, um, sleep apnea tends to um, be much more of a risk factor in the younger population. Um, as you get older, um, other risk factors like hypertension and smoking can play much more of a role. Uh, but because sleep apnea is so much more less diagnosed in the younger population, um, it is much more of a risk factor. So it's important to identify and then treat sleep apnea, especially in a younger population, and by that we mean under 50. Actually, men are who have moderate to severe sleep apnea are three times more at risk of developing a stroke than men who do not have sleep apnea. Wow, scary statistic. Yeah, so it's really important to identify and treat sleep apnea. Okay, and what, what are those treatments that, that you're speaking of? So CPAP, which is um, a machine that helps to force oxygen in to your upper airway, is the gold standard. But another newer treatment are oral appliances. Um, so in obstructive sleep apnea, your upper airway is obstructed and that doesn't allow for oxygen to get in. And these oral appliances can be very helpful in opening up the airway, allowing you to breathe. And these are smaller, you know, these are things that you can carry around with you. Um, these are things that don't, are not as obtrusive, um, don't bother your partner while you're sleeping at night. So these are, um, you know, treatments that, um, especially in the younger population, I think they would be much more um, compliant with, which is obviously a very important factor in treating sleep apnea. All right, great. 
Thanks for coming on to the show today. Thank you. Well, that completes this episode of Ann's Sleep, a whole you social talk show series with Dr. Huma Sheikh. We encourage you to explore the rest of the episodes and visit wholeyou.com to learn more about the latest in sleep breathing disorder treatment. The sleep professionals in this video series teamed up with Whole You to spread healthy sleep education across America and were paid for their appearances.